Hey everyone, welcome back to FTB Revelation. And since I last left off, I haven't really done too much. Just a little gathering of uh, some food for the mess hall, and that's just about it. Haven't done any mining or anything. Uh, currently, I have a uh, big problem, and that is, well, power. Currently, we have these machines right here running, and, uh, well, they're using a lot of power. Even though I've uh, added the uh, generators here on both of these machines, um, they actually draw from the power cell first, so you can see I actually have this turned on. And right now, the only thing we have running is our deep resonance generator pulling from this resonating crystal. That only gives us about 80 RF a tick. Um, not necessarily 80, but, eh, you know, close enough almost. So, that is basically our power supply, but today I actually want to get inside of something new, and that would be... Nuclear craft. I have not really messed around with this ever before, and I think I'm going to give it a shot. So, I uh, did a little bit of looking around and kind of piecing things together here and there, and I have come to the conclusion that there is a uh, machine that we need first, and that would probably be the alloy furnace. We're going to need some basic plating, uh, plating so we're going to need some graphite dust. So, in order to get the graphite dust, we can get this a couple different ways. We can also get this in the manufactory. So let's go ahead and make that up first. Now, there's other ways we can go through about getting it. We can gra uh, grab ourselves a graphite ingot, which is just easily smelted and then just pulverized down. But currently, as it says, we don't really have a pulverizer. We do have a crusher, though. Maybe we could do that. Maybe that'll work. Let's give that a shot. Instead of making a whole new machine for something that we don't necessarily need, let's just go ahead and do that real quick. So let's go ahead and toss inside of our powered furnace about half a stack of coal. This is so weird. I find it so strange that it just sits there and disappears. That's very, very awkward. Um, is it even doing anything? Thorium boron. Hello? Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, looks... Yeah, there we go. So that's working. Okay, good. All right, so we got our graphite ingots. These are actually from nuclear craft, which is pretty awesome. We're going to go ahead and uh, toss them inside of here. Let's go ahead and uh, disable this for the time being. Uh, another way to do that, we could probably grab ourselves a lever. Toss that, we'll say, right here. And that does indeed activate that. So pretty cool. There we go, another 18. So hopefully that did not send anything over. So there we go. We got a little graphite dust. Let's go ahead and pull out these eight. And let's go ahead and start working on making up the alloy furnace. The alloy furnace requiring some graphite dust and lead. So let's just grab some lead. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a little too much. But hey, whatever. All right. Now these make up two sets. So should I make up two of these? Maybe we should. Let's just... Let's just go ham. We got plenty of resources. Oh, and we... Wait, what? Alloy. So we do need the manufacturing. Okay. So this just requires some lead, some copper solenoids, and a piston. Copper solenoids only being copper and iron. It makes two sets. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, one, two. I believe we do have some pistons, or a piston. There we go. And the only thing I'm not really big on on this is the fact that most of these machines look the same. So it's kind of hard to get an eye on them in uh, JEI over here. It's a little little annoying, but hey, whatever. All right, and we also need four more pieces of iron to go and finish up the alloy furnace. We need two more lead. Two. And we should have everything we need to go ahead and make up the alloy furnace. Now, the reason why we're going to be needing this little guy, let's go ahead and place him down, take a look at him real quick, give him a nice little 360. Okay, nothing too special here. So it looks like we got uh, possibly an upgrade slot. Looks like we can make a speed upgrade if necessary. This uses 10 RF per tick. That's actually not that bad, to be honest. Uh, what I'm going to do is probably turn this off in a minute so we don't waste too much more of the power that we currently have. And uh, speed multiplier 100%, power multiplier 100%. So do we have a power upgrade too? I don't really see any other upgrades, but I could just be missing it. 
unless they look completely different. I don't know if this takes more than one or if it can just only take one, but it uh, looks pretty simple to make, so let's go ahead and make up one of them at least just to kind of see what it does for us. And I believe it's just this and that. So one little speed upgrade coming up. Right click on it. Okay, doesn't actually apply, but there we go. So speed multiplier of 200%, power multiplier of 300%. Wow, so you get double the speed and cost three times the power. But that's not too bad considering it's only 30 RF a tick. Um, maybe we should take a look though. I'm kind of curious to see if we can stack them. So just for science sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and see if that is indeed the case. Okay, we can. I don't know how many we can actually go up to, but power multiplier of 600%, bringing it up to 60 RF a tick. Still not too bad. And speed multiplier of, well, 300%. So that's a lot better, actually. So it did actually send a few. Well, actually, no, it didn't send over any. That's good. All right, so we'll go ahead and let that finish up. I do believe we are going to need a few more of those. Now, there's another machine we need to start working towards, and that is going to be the isotope separator. Like I said, kind of a little hard to find these things, but we need a few things here. We're gonna need to make this ferroborn alloy, which is a steel, which we have our steel, and we have boron now, so pretty easy to make. Let's go ahead and grab some of the steel. We have plenty of that, and plenty of the ferroborn alloy, or not for uh, boron alloy, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, obviously. And we need to go ahead and start setting this up in a place. Now, I'd love to set this up in the lab, but unfortunately, the lab is just not ready yet. I'm going to go ahead and take out this guy here for the time being, and we're going to place him there. He's going to go ahead and get all of the power that he needs, and we're going to place these items inside and let those start cooking. Um, isotope separator. This is currently a one-to-one. -one. Okay, so we don't really need that. Let's go ahead and put that back in there. So that looks pretty cool. Nice little... Uh, aesthetic lighting effect on the block, pretty cool. Kind of showing that it's doing its job and working. Now, considering we don't have anything in there currently, and it's only using 10 RF a tick, it's still going pretty fast. Let's add one upgrade. It's a little bit faster, let's add two upgrades. There we go, that's not too bad. All right, so right now, I believe our power is still going. We're still producing more than enough power than we actually need. The uh, sun's actually starting to set. So this might be uh, not necessarily a longer episode, but this might actually take over a couple episodes and actually maybe get somewhere to where we can actually start seeing some results and or maybe some power generation out of this. So the isotope separator, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that real quick. If we hold shift over the block while we're hovering over it, it says separates materials into their isotopes can exempt medium voltage IC2 power. Now we're not running IC2 power, so this is pretty cool, the fact that this can actually run off IC2 and RF power. So that's pretty neat, I like it. All right, so let's go ahead and start taking a look at what we need. Again, one more time, so we need the ferroborn alloy. We also need some advanced plating. Advanced plating requires tough alloy, a basic plating for redstone. Tough alloy requires us to take ferroborn alloys and combine them with lithium. And the cool thing is, I believe this um, tough alloy, which let's go ahead and take a look at that, um, should be around here somewhere right there. Tough alloy, now we already saw how to make it. I do believe we can actually make armor and weapons out of this, and it's probably pretty good from what I'm understanding. So we got pickaxe, all of our tools, and look at that. That actually does not look that bad. Three armor, seven armor, and it gives us extra toughness as well. So this might not be a bad idea. Portable ender chests. Oh, that's kind of cool. Also, uh, music disc. So we might actually upgrade to that, because that is definitely better than what we currently have armor-wise. Let's also go ahead and sleep through the night real quick while that's finishing up. So yeah, if we get a little extra of that, which we probably have enough stuff to make... Maybe a good idea to go ahead and do that. All right, so a little graphite dust. We're going to hold on to this. We might need this in the near future. We also have some basic platings that we are going to need to make our advanced platings, which is wonderful. So let's go ahead and grab our other resources we're going to need. We need some uh, redstone, and I believe we have lithium up here somewhere. Which one of these is lithium? 
Is it this one? That's titanium. Or did I not put lithium in here? Iridium's nice. That's wonderful. Wait, thermal foundation? What? I was unaware thermal foundation used iridium. Doesn't look like it really uses it for anything. Okay, it just has it in there. That's interesting. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So we need the lithium ingots. Redstone furnace, induction smelter, arc furnace, or the isotope separator gives us lithium seven. Oh man, so we actually have to have a redstone furnace. Let's take a look at the lithium here. So it actually shows you can make it in the uh, furnaces too. Okay. Well, let's do that then. Let's go and grab a little bit of that. A little bit of this. We're going to toss it. It doesn't work in the powered furnace, obviously, which is... Oh, we already got a little fuel. Oops, hello. Can you... Maybe not. Maybe they disabled that. Hmm. Could be disabled or could be reasons for maybe possibly a bug. So we might have to take a look into making a powered furnace to see if we can actually get this running, or we might have just really, really screwed up. So, and uh, pretty much crushed it when we probably shouldn't have. So we're gonna need a machine frame, we're gonna need some copper gears. Let's grab a few things we're gonna need. We're gonna need iron, we're gonna need some copper, we're gonna need a little bit of tin, we're gonna need um, some glass. I'm just kind of used to some of these um, Recipes. I'm just going to grab a little extra of everything. Got the redstone on us. Um, I believe we're also going to need bricks. Do I still have any bricks made? Hello, bricks. Any bricks hanging out anywhere? Nope. All right. Not too much of a problem. We'll just go ahead and toss these inside of here. Good thing we still have our power generating over here. We kind of want to run over here and see where we're at on the... Uh, the storage blocks. This is probably going to give us a little bit of hunger if we get a little too close, but it looks like that's getting up there. Okay. And this guy is getting down to about 17.5% power. So we do need to start getting a, a nice, reliable power source very soon. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's really going to be that amazing for us, but uh, might just have to go ahead and maybe utilize our other generators and solid fuels in the meantime just until we can get, kind of get something a little bit more stable up and running. All right, so we we know we got brakes in there, so we're gonna need two sets of actual bricks in order to make our powered redstone furnace. All right, so 10 gear, we're gonna need some iron, so let's just grab us a nice cool stack of that. Make us up one 10 gear. Make ourselves the machine frame. We're going to need to make two copper gears. We're also going to need, I believe, do we need one gold? Thankfully. Good. And now we have everything we need to make our powered basic furnace. I'm going to pop this guy probably right here in the front for now, just so that we can kind of uh, let him run, do his thing, and it looks like, indeed, it is. Now, the more power these machines have, the faster that they will work. Do, 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 do. So we can see it speeding up as it builds up and gets its maximum power uh, stored in the side of its buffer, which is wonderful. Wait, what are you doing? Wait, what? Are you, are you cooking my lithium as I... Oh, my. How are you... Oh, you automatically export, you booger. Don't you do that. That is the wrong thing to do. I need that lithium because I want to combine it with my Fairborn alloy. There we go. So this is going to probably be draining our power generation quite extensively. This is still running, going to be using 60. This is using 20. So probably ought to just turn this on for a minute as it'll just slowly trickle down. This guy is full done using its power so let's put the bricks away so we don't really need those anymore and there we go we got our tough alloy coming in wonderful stuff more lithium good 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 
All right, let's go ahead and grab out of here 14 for the time being. We'll toss those in there, get some of this tough alloy out, and let's head back to making our isotope separator. So we got our tough alloy. We need three more of those. This might take a minute. <laughs> Thankfully, these are generating two per craft, so that's not too bad. We could increase the uh, power usage on this, and make it uh, work a little bit faster, but it's not doing too bad currently. Now, after we actually get that taken care of, what we're going to want to do after that is probably toss inside of that some uranium. Now, this is where things are going to get a little, little wonky. I'm kind of unsure whether or not it's going to cause radiation or not on us. So if at all, and it does... Hopefully that'll help us out. If not, we might have to make the one from IC2, which I do believe requires just rubber and uh, sticky resin rubber and stuff. Could be wrong. It might have changed it. Hazmat suit. Yep, orange dye or plastic, actually, from industrial foregoing. So that's pretty cool. Nice. It's cool. Uh, we can use rubber or that, so... If at all necessary, we'll see. All right, so we should have enough t uh, tough alloy to go ahead and finish making our last advanced plating. And then we just need that and an alloy furnace. So we need to make another one because I want to keep the one we currently have. Now that is a little annoying that they actually do that. Uh, I think it would be better if they found like some sort of like machine frame, possibly. That would be kind of cool. Kind of like um, thermal expansion, but sadly not really the case. So probably should have made two of those in, <laughs> at the start, but uh, no big deal. So that means we need to make another manufactory. Wow, that is that is a little obnoxious. I won't lie. That is a little obnoxious because you have to go through one to another to another to another. That is. Kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> but it's all right. We'll get it taken care of. No big deal. Let's just grab a few things. That iron does not belong in there. Let's grab a few of those. We need one, two, three, four. That was weird. The clicking clackety doesn't always want to seem to work every time, or sometimes it wants to work too much. So we need a little bit more lead. One, two, three, four. There we go. So there's the manufactory. We have everything to make the alloy furnace again, and everything to make our isotope separator. So this separates them into their isotopes. I'm going to go ahead and let that finish running. This has got us a little bit more lithium. We're going to pick this up. It retains its power, so we don't have to worry about being wasteful there. Let's go ahead and switch this off for the time being. Place this guy down here. And take a look inside of our isotope separator. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we need to take a uranium ingot, place it inside of here, and slowly but surely it's going to be doing some work for us. Let's go ahead and pull out these speed upgrades and everything else as that is done processing for us. And we'll see that this is using now 60 RF a tick and a little bit faster. So we're going to take a look at what this actually does to our uranium. So it separates it into uranium-238, an isotope of uranium, and gives us a tiny clump of uranium-235. Okay. Pretty cool. I believe now we might need to maybe look at maybe making... Let's see. Let's go to uh, at nuclear craft. Smelts items very quickly, uses uranium and thorium ingots and dust as fuel. Hmm. Okay. Dissolver, salt mixer, pressurizer, superconductor, melter. Fusion core. This is a central part of a multi block fusion reactor. The core needs to have a ring of fusion electromagnets around it simultaneously connected by four sets of fusion reactors on all four sides. The ring, which is a square, needs to be hollow. It doesn't require this. Holy crap. So now we're actually kind of getting into not only more 
things, but now we're actually getting into more <laughs> chemical and uh, very complicated sciences, which is wonderful and just kind of fits everything that I've been wanting to do. So these little guys are kind of cool. So we got the um, RTGs here. Now these RTGs are pretty awesome. So we can see that uh, requires a few items here. Mericum, Merci, Mericium. 241, and this is made by the fluid infuser. Where do you get that, though? Okay, that's the oxide. So, where do you get the oxide? The oxide comes from this, but you have to have this in order to get that. So, that's that doesn't make any sense. So the wonderful things about these little blocks here, I'm sure they're radioactive in some form or way, uh, but they produce constantly the amount that they uh, they show there. So we kind of wouldn't mind getting some plutonium, but the plutonium is not really showing a reliable way of how to obtain that. It just kind of keeps going back and forth into that loop. So we need to figure out what it is, unless they took it out of here where you can't use those which might be the case or I just kind of might be missing like I said I'm very new to this mod so I'm just kind of learning along the way as well maybe showing you guys some new things or mistakes that I might be making so produces 10 millibuckets of helium constantly cobblestone generator oh that's interesting and nitrogen collector Okay. All right, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick one-two break. I'm gonna hold on to this real quick. I want to see something. All right. So it doesn't seem to really be causing any radioactive spill onto us, which is a good sign. Um, but I'm gonna take a quick little break, and uh, I'm gonna kind of look through over here and just kind of see what maybe our next step is gonna be after uh, making our isotope separator. So we'll be back here in just a second. All right, guys, and we're back. So I did a little looking around over here, and it seems like um, probably just kind of guessing here. Um, if we're going to want to get into any type of, like, power source and generation here, I believe we're going to be needing a fission controller so that way we can start working on actual fission power, possibly. So it says uh, under the fission controller, it says build a multi-block reactor, so, you know, Fission reactor, using reactor casing, reactor cells, coolers, and graphite blocks. Place the controller along at the edge of a corner or within one of the faces of the structure. Emits EV, <laughs> oh gosh, IC2 power. Jeez. All right, so in order to make this, we're actually going to need to make the nuclear furnace. So actually, I've been actually a little curious about this guy anyway already. So in order to make this, we're going to need our tough alloy, a furnace, and some basic platings. So thankfully, we got our basic platings already. We got some uh, tough alloy. We just need to make ourselves a furnace. So I'm actually going to leave those furnaces over there. Um, now, I'm actually doing this not really to get the fission controller yet mainly because I kind of want to see how well this nuclear furnace actually works I kind of like the way it looks for one it says it actually runs off um it says it runs off so it, says it uses uranium and thorium ingots and dust as fuel so we have where's our thorium where's the thorium magnesium boron there's there's thorium we have 44 of those and 37 of our uranium. We have a little bit of uranium in yellow right now. If I'm not mistaken, if we take this yellow right, um, I'm actually going to pick up our isotope separator currently. I'm wondering actually a little bit if it retains power. It does not, so that's a little unfortunate. We lost some power there. But if we toss inside of here our eulorium, I believe this actually converts us into uranium. Nope. It doesn't. Unless this cooks it into uranium, because I believe I have done that before. Let's take a look over here. So 30, yep. So once, even though it's in uh, eulorium dust, once it's smelted inside of our powered furnace here, it actually converts it into uranium. 
pretty cool. I kind of like that. So let's grab a few pieces of uranium. I'm actually a little curious about this. So we got our uranium ingots in here. Um, let's actually only put one. And I want to see if it can actually smelt and how quickly it smelts. It's full stack of cobblestone. Holy crap, that is actually pretty fast. Now how useful and how long does our uranium last for? We'll see how many blocks that it can actually cook up with one uranium. And it looks like half a stack. Nice and easy. That's not too bad. Plus that looks kind of cool. I like the block. Not too bad. Alright guys, well I think that is a good start for today. Getting started inside of nuclear craft. I believe in the next episode we're going to try to take it a little bit further. Maybe do a little bit more experimenting with uh, maybe getting and working up towards setting up possibly a uh, fission controller and maybe even a fission reactor if that is indeed what it is called. But uh, I'll do a little bit of looking around and seeing what all we need. Grabbing a few more um, of the required items that we're going to need. So I'll get a few things made up preemptively. So hopefully it'll make things a little bit more seamless for the next episode. So with that all being said, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode of FTB Revelation. If you guys have been sure to hit that like button helps me out plus it lets me know you guys are still enjoying the series and if you guys really enjoyed it and you want to see some more videos from me be sure to hit that subscribe button that little bell notification next to it as well will alert you when i post a new video on my channel and so with that all said and done um if you guys have any helpful tips tricks or comments feel free to put them in the comment section down below and i'll see you guys in the next episode until then goodbye